Hello, so let's start. Um, we're going to talk about package managers and I hope that's what you're here for. If not, there's a door on each side. Um, this is actually not a cathedral, this is a church. It's uh, La Sagrada Familia in uh, Barcelona, which has been under construction for over a hundred years and they plan to finish this by 2026, roughly. That's the plan today. Now, before we start, uh, two questions for you. How many of you use a distro package manager on Linux? Pretty much everyone. How many of you use a language-specific package manager like NPM, PyPy, RubyGems? Okay, and how many of you rely on the distro package manager to provision your language-specific packages? It's much fewer, which is what I was expecting. So some do, but most of them do not. And, and that's, that's a bit the topic of the talk. Um, so a bit, bit about me. Um, my mission, and that's what I do in and out of, uh, of work, is to make it easier to reuse free, library, and open source software. I'm a developer and maintainer of several packages, uh, a series of projects called About Code. That's my primary set, including something called Scan Code, which is a tool for scanning for license, packages, and origins. I contribute to the Linux kernel, Bitcoin Ace Trace, and, and many, many other projects. So, the question that things that bothers me is why each time, so I run Linux on all my machines, why each time I run apt install, apt upgrade, things works 99.999% of the time, mostly, and that applies to to Debian-based distros or, or RPM-based distros. And why when I do a pip, an NPM, a bundle install, things don't work? Much more often than nine, nine nines, right? And, and, and you, you're laughing, so obviously that probably resonates a bit. It's, <laughs> things don't always work, they don't often work. They very often don't work at all. And it bothers me because I was actually bitching against this for developers. Uh, it says, why don't they get the latest version of the packages I want? And, and why do I have to not use the distro manager which works and use another package manager that doesn't work but gets the stuff that I want? Right, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> so why did I call this talk Cathedral, uh, uh, talking about Cathedral, the Cathedral and Bazaar? I don't know if any of you were born last century. Um, I'm an old dog. But last century there was somebody called Eric Kremen, family called ESR, that wrote a seminal essay called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. And this is not exactly the same cathedral and bazaars we're talking about today. But his point was, how come that a development process as messy as the development of Linux where patches are coming from every place, ends up being able to build a system that works, and that works pretty darn well most of the time. And one of the things that things were released very often, on the one end, uh, a lot of betas, and everything was delegated, whereas his point was that another style of development is more of the cathedral approach where you architect things nicely, and you're a bit less open about accepting contributions. Now, that's just, just, just a side note, but I reuse this because it resonates in, in the world of package management. There's really two, two types of packages, package cathedrals, and that's the one for, for distros, and, and the bazaars. That's the one for language, language specific packages. So the one we use for Rust, uh, uh, Node, uh, Python, Ruby, and the likes. And they're really not at all the same packages. They're very, very different. And we call them all packages, but that's probably a misnomer. Uh, a distro package works typically for a single operating system, right? You're building for Fedora, Debian, and so on. You, you don't have to worry much about your code running on Mac and, and, and Windows most of the time. That may be a concern of a 
language specific package, whether it's built in C or C++ or in an OS agnostic language that requires some native dependencies. <coughs> the, the package management systems are general purpose for distros and, and very specific for, sorry, and very specific uh, when it comes to language. And as I heard before, you know, okay, Conan is a C, C++ package manager. Can you build no Java package with it? Possibly. And you can probably do that, uh, put JavaScript in, in PyPy and, and uh, uh, Java in NPMs. But it's usually a lot of hacking and tweaking that's required there. It's, it's not their primary purpose. The other thing is that if you think about a package, if you're a library author or consumer, it, it's really about authors and individuals. There's one or a group of person that provides a bit of code that's supposed to be very specific in terms of function. In the context of distros, we have usually a team of maintainers which work collaboratively together to uh, not package one, but package many packages that are related and of the same family. There's, there's another context also, you're either a user or a builder, um, which differs. Uh, the testing is, is, is uh, interesting. How, how many of you do know a project called Apache Gump? Okay, it's, it's a pretty obscure project. It's actually interesting and weird. They're taking all the head of every projects at Apache and try to build them all the time with the letters of head. So each time there's a commit, they rebuild everything against the latest and greatest. Obviously, it's very often read and doesn't build. Um, <clears throat> but what's interesting to, to understand is that when you build a distro, you don't care about having uh, just the test of one package, but you want to make sure that all your packages for a given version release work with the same version of libc and the same version of this and that. And you release them together. You don't release just one. Sometimes you release one, but if it's usually dot version, it's gonna be always in the context of a larger whole and a main distro release. The other thing on the dependency side, the, the dependencies we express most of the time for language specific packages are pretty simple. Whereas the dependency uh, language for uh, distro packages are actually pretty rich. There's a lot of things which you look at them, says conflict, de depends, resolve, obsolete. Um, there's there's a, a very different context of uh, managing dependencies. The other thing also, and most of the time when we consume package from a language repository, we do consume these as is. You, know, you take a Maven jar, verbatim. You take an NPM, 99% of the time you read it as is. The packages that are provided by distros, in contrast, are 99% of the time patched, modified, deconstructed, reconstructed. You take a spell, which is a spell checker, one nice tarball of stream. In distro, it ends up being possibly 50 packages, one for each language, for the dictionaries, maybe one for the library, one for a common tool, common line tool. So we are not talking at all about the same packages. Now if you take the, the, the builder perspective, the bazaar is like a box of Legos. And the cathedral is trying to build an actual thing with these, uh, with these Legos. <clears throat> so now, thinking again about your perspective, as a user, even if I'm a developer, so forget you're developing software for a minute. As a user, you want a system that's stable, that works, that installs and updates all the time, right? That's what you get from a distro. As a builder, I want the Lego bricks that I can beat my cathedral with. And I don't care too much about uh, uh, the rest. I want to make sure they're really fit for their function, they have a single well-known purpose, and I can use them as a brick as a stone and assemble my edifice. So now, let's dive a bit again into dependencies. <coughs> most language specific package managers, I say most, there's, there's a waste variant, have usually two options, maybe three 
options on how you express dependencies and how and when dependent packages are used. It's usually build, set up, uh, time, or run time. And that's pretty much it. And it works actually quite well. You rarely need much more than that. Some package manager, I think it's a PHP composer, expose uh, kind of distro-like, more richer language with a lot of verbs and type of dependencies. I'm not sure they're very much used, um, uh, but it's, it's a rare, it's more of a, an exception. The other thing is that in most cases, language specific package managers have a fairly simple way to resolve dependency conflicts. So dependency conflict is when <coughs> in your dependency tree, two packages require the same package with a version that don't match. Uh, NPM, for instance, has a sleek way to resolve that by saying, I don't care, I'll take all the versions, <laughs> which can be a problem. I'm sure you face that at times. Um, in contrast, distro package have evolved to have fairly complicated and complex way to resolve a dependency using what's called a SAT solver and Boolean satisfiability, which is really something that's very simple at the basis, but extremely complex in terms of its implementation. It's, it's eventually an NP-hard problem. And to the best of knowledge, there's very few, if any, language package managers that have or that, that use any uh, SAT solver based uh, dependency resolution. Um, one of them, I think, is uh, Conda uh, in the Python scientific world. Um, but it's quasi distro like package manager rather than being very language specific. Um, there's no such thing in Bundler, NPM, or PIP, for instance. The other thing that makes a big difference is the kind of social contract that exists between the language specific package management environment and the distro package management environment. Again, in the language specific world, it's usually individuals. When I say individuals, that can be a team, but you're usually producing one brick, one Lego brick at a time. <clears throat> you focus as much as possible on a single function. There's no coordination that's required most of the time with other package managers. You just consume their stuff. You don't care what they do. You don't care about their testing and, and their whole stuff. You just care about eventually in the confine of your single project, are my dependencies and direct dependency resolved and working, but you, you don't care about the rest. And it's, it's a bit having a utilitarian uh, look at things. If you think about plastic bricks, Legos, you care about you know, the mold, injection molding, the quality of plastic you take. In contrast, when you're building a distro, it's more like art and architecture. <clears throat> you go to the bazaar and you pick the bricks, the Legos. You want to make sure you know their characteristics in terms of plastics and else. But there's a really extensive effort for collaboration and coordination. And in fact, at some level, there's little code that's produced, reasonably speaking, and relatively speaking to the, the rest of the, the scope, and, and a lot of discussions. <coughs> so that's, that's really a, a very important distinction. <coughs> now, let's, let's turn the things a bit around. In fact, you could think probably as each package that you write as a library or an individual project as a mini catch-all of its own. Good. You care about testing. You care about ensuring that your code works in the context of its dependencies and that doesn't crash all the time. And think of it as if you were taking these small cathedrals and assembling them further up. So it's really eventually not really strict separation between the two, but it's, it's turtles all the way down. Uh, And, and that's what makes eventually things work. So there's, there's a way to eventually reconcile that at some level. So what happens today really is that there's really these two contexts, either I'm a user or a builder. 
and I'm usually both at the same time. I am building components and package for them to be reused, and I'm reusing mine and further package to build system and applications. And that's building of system of an application is a system integration job. That's what Linux distro do. Um, what thing that that that's often overlooked is when you start using, for instance, containers. You very quickly actually are becoming your own system integrator. You escape the confine of the nice assembly and coordination work that's done by distro maintainers, and you take the responsibility without really knowing it is uh, each container ends up being eventually uh, as complex and as messy as a whole Linux distribution but usually there's not the same discipline and efforts of coordination and collaboration that's been put into it so that's important and so I will stop bitching and I think we all should stop bitching about out of the distro packages um, we should work with distros to help them in many ways. One, if we want to make sure that our latest language runtime or package manager is available, well, we can help. You don't have to be the maintainer of the packaging tools to help on, the maintain, on maintaining that package proper. And actually, weirdly enough, there are very few upstream package authors that are effectively the maintainer of their own package in distros because there's one upstream authors and many, many distros eventually. <clears throat> so you can help this way. And the other way you can help is when you're building packages, and I'm terribly bad at that, make sure that they're actually easy to package upstream by distros. And possibly you can provide a package manifest for your favorite, favorite distros, whether it would be Brew on a Mac or a Debian or RPM package, which can help the work upstream. And you can collaborate uh, uh, the work downstream, and you can collaborate with uh, 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 the package manager and distro to make your package easier and, and faster to package. And so really, um, I think that's important in Sovereign Overlook. Distros don't happen by accident. It's a lot of hard work and coordination that's needed, and, and we all need to give a bit of love there. And that's it. Just a plug, I'll be doing a talk on uh, tracing build with this trace uh, in another computing room. And I'll be back after that in this room here. Thank you. Any, any question? Uh, what's your point of view about uh, Repackaging in the distributions and um, uh, specifics of, uh, of package like in, in computer you have a lot or, or npm you have a lot of uh, package and uh, really a lot and uh, it is um, really hard to uh, maintain because some languages don't care about uh, um, simplicity and uh, expand uh, so what's your point of view about uh, uh, that, that's a complex topic. <laughs> so the question is, uh, what about the repackaging of language-specific packages in distributions? Yeah, we'll decide the number. And especially the number of packages that may exist, uh, <laughs> uh, which are typically in the tens or hundreds of thousands in an upstream, uh, in a language-specific package uh, repository environment. Um, it, it's a difficult thing. Uh, on the one hand, distros, being software, often have direct dependencies on a specific package and package version. Uh, take the case for uh, RPM-based distros for a long time. They depended on Python 2.4 and then Python 2.6, even though it, it was a long time since Python 2.7, Python 3 were available. Um, so they have this need of dependencies of their own to actually run on the one end. And on the other end, they want also to provide some level of coverage for uh, language specific packages. I, I don't have an answer. I don't know what's to be done there. Um, 
the, the reality is that most of the language specific packages are often considered outdated when they're in the distro, even in the latest release of a distro. Uh, and folks tend to not do system-wide installation, but always project-specific or user-specific installation. Um, there's probably, I, I don't think there's, there's a really easy solution. One would be to repackage everything, but that's like double packaging. Uh, probably may make sense to uh, instead work with this host to ensure, for instance, if you work with Node that you have the latest Node runtime and NPM installed, same thing for Ruby and Python. And probably let go at a distro level of uh, uh, language specific package repackaging unless you have a direct dependency and a need for system wide installation for it. That probably would be the best bet. Um, that probably would simplify the work too. The difficult. You, you can let go at the distribution level because the distribution includes applications. And lots of applications need those. Yeah, so it's, it's not an easy, there, there's no easy solution, unfortunately. And do you think that uh, container images could help because there is uh, maybe a, a clear contract for between the distro and the, uh, the project, the applicative project that you put in your image, and then it's more easy to uh, deploy and package your okay. project using Docker images or container images instead of using a uh, classic uh, package manager? Yeah. So the question is: Is it does do containers and Docker? provide a solution to the problem of distro versus language packages. Um, I don't think so. They actually amplify the problem at some level. Um, what is a container? It's essentially a, a slice of, uh, or it's a mini distro. It's a slice of user land. So you have everything but a kernel, uh, but you have everything. What it provides is isolation. And what you give up for isolation is immutability. So your container is immutable. Um, and it's not easy to, to update. Eventually, you need to rebuild it. Otherwise, you're just accumulating uh, levels over levels of, of updates. Um, the, the, the thing is that you have one benefit, which is you can trim down the set of dependencies to just what you need. So that's a good thing. Um, you can isolate them. That's also a good thing. But there's very simple ways to do that, just <coughs> putting using user level installations. Um, it's supposed to help with deployments on a massive scale. So that has benefits. It's much simpler to deploy a simple file, single file on many machines than, than uh, uh, a lot of packages. Um, the fact it's immutable. It's a good thing in some cases. It's also a pain when you have a security bug and you've deployed 200 containers, each with small variations. You have to rebuild 200 containers. It's not fun. Uh, so it's, I, I'm not sure it's really solving any of the problems there. It helps in some cases. It creates a lot of other issues in the other end. The other thing, talking about containers, is that when you actually redistribute containers, or deploy containers, you are de facto your whole stack Linux integrator. You took responsibility for the whole stack uh, above the kernel, and, and there's much more ceremony that's needed there uh, in terms of uh, uh, compliance on the license, bug tracking, security tracking, uh, things that were provided to you as a service by distros that you may no longer benefit of all the time. Yes? Uh, I just want to know your opinion about uh, is this uh, differentiation between cathedrals and bazaars something due to the design fashions of, of, of the previous generation of generating distributions and now we are going to uh, more uh, uh, agnostic uh, languages that are just everywhere and can run everywhere and then new designers uh, start designing package management in, in a different way completely. So, so the question is, uh, uh, is this dichotomy between uh, bazaar and cathedral something of the past? Or 
Will there be something that's more language agnostic? Because for me, Docker, for example, is used like a bazaar, bazaar of cathedrals. Yes. It's, like <laughs> it's a, not a cathedral of bazaars, it's the opposite. That's kind of yeah, true. Yeah. Well, but it's like a modern solution to something really, really old, like distributions. Um, is something, is age a factor? <laughs> so. The, the difficulty there is uh, it's hard to build package managers. And actually, there's, I think there's a, there are talks today. It's, it's really hard. I've tried a few bits of time, and I fail lamentably every time. Uh, so it's, it's a difficult job. I've built distros, uh, not Linux distros, but a uh, long time ago, an Eclipse-based distribution, which was called Easy Eclipse, and which had at a very small scale, all the problems of, uh, uh, that you can have in a Linux distribution. Um, it, it's, uh, again, the, the problem between the bazaar and not the bazaar, it's not so much a technical issue. It's more a problem of coordination. And, and this coordination, there's no tool that can actually fulfill it. You have to have people that discuss. And if you see all the, the efforts that's deployed by uh, distribution teams to have package trackers and ways that they can collaborate and track all the things. That's where the, the big effort <coughs> is. Uh, now, there's maybe a bit of light on the horizon. There are kind of two emerging things uh, on the distro side. One is Nix, and on the package management side, one is PAC. <laughs> and, uh, which, which provides kind of very different take on the whole problem. Go ahead. Oh, so I, I was just. He's the maintainer of SPAC, by the way. <laughs> um, so you said that we should give the distro some love. I, I guess my question would be what can the distros do for the packagers, and what can the packagers do for the distros to grease the skin? Because, I mean, if you, if you think about what a distro is, it's all the glue that was required, given a certain set of base assumptions, to build all these packages on top. Right. So, what do you do to automate the glue? Yeah, well, that's the problem. You can't. The glue, eventually, when everything is a package, the glue is what you and I do to actually take a bunch of Lego bricks and make it a system. Okay, so time's up. We, we can take the, the discussion offline or later. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The two, the two alternatives you mentioned are the uh, Nix, uh, which is a Linux distribution. Nix, like this? N I X. Okay. And SPAC. S P A C K. Ah, SPAC. Okay.